As promised, um, I am on today. I'm Dr. Tiffany Wright, Winsburg County Supervisor. For all of you who know me, I'm just Tiffany. So I'm just on. Um, I'm going to wait till some people join us. Um, so just give it a couple more minutes. I am starting a little bit early because it's a lot to cover. And I want to make sure we can kind of get through it all and be able to take some questions from our citizens um, uh, is, is what I hopefully can get through this evening. I don't want to keep anyone long, but I'm here. So we're just going to give it a few minutes to get some folks on. And hopefully, I see we've got five more right now. We're going to try to get some more. If you all would like to share this, um, get groups together. It's a lot of good information we're pushing out today. So um, I'm looking for some good buy-in um, from some of the things that we're planning on doing. I'm looking for some comments, your concerns about the state of the county and where you'd like to see the county go. Um, this is not the first soup chat that I've hosted. Uh, I try to get them every month, try to do them monthly. Um, in order to be able to uh, hear what the citizens are um, feeling out there and what their, you know, their their concerns are. So we're up to about 21 people right now. So we are still going to wait just a few minutes. Um, can everybody hear me out there? Somebody send me a quick message saying you can hear me. Can we get anything? And I'm in here with one of our trusted uh, public uh, PIOs or media, not PIOs, media marketing team, Miss um, Summer Baxley. So, Summer, you see any comments on there? Everything's fine, so I'm sure don't mind me. Okay. <laughs> well, your end is good. Okay. And you're brown, yes. Okay, good deal. I think my... Uh, my computer is a little delayed, so I just have to, I know I see a few more messages popping up. So we're up to about 23 people. I'm going to try to get to 30 before we can we get started. Again, as always, these videos will be left online for you all to view, share, uh, and we still monitor them at least 24 hours after comments. And as always, you all, I don't mind if you um, hit me up or inbox me or message me to ask any follow-up questions you may have after this meeting. Thank you all. Um, my camera is up in the air, so you know I'm kind of trying to look down at the messages and uh, maintain some eye contact with you all. Um, I have a good bit of stuff to go over, as I said before, so I'm going to get started uh, in the next 30 seconds. So we're looking at 32 people, so that's a good deal. So hopefully everybody is, I'm going to go through Miss Josh, I hope I, I want to butcher your last name, Josh P. I am going to go through the things that we're going to discuss in tonight's meeting. So if you just give me two seconds, less than a second to, to get that done. Um, hopefully again, everyone is having a good evening and, and had a good day, good safe day. I have a lot to cover. I'm going to try to spend the first 15 minutes on some of the things that I need to uh, reinforce or get out to the citizens. And then after that, uh, you will have your opportunity to ask any questions or make any comments. Um, some of the ground rules of this meeting is that I've tried to select topics that uh, people have had some concern over over the course of my one year, 11 month uh, birthday as the county supervisor, I should say. Uh, so I'm just focusing on those that had the most uh, questions about. Now, these are not all inclusive of what I know or I believe that the citizens are interested in hearing or have concerns over. It's just what I pulled out of the, what I, you know, the most thought about or the most common things that people wanted to talk about or had some concern about. So I, as a, uh, in the upcoming district meetings, um, and we're trying to put that together together, uh, put that together, we're trying to do upcoming district virtual meetings to where we actually set something up like this, but it'll be specific to different districts um, and get into more specific things to your community that you may have to ask me or you'd like to know about. I'm also planning on inviting your county council member from that district um, to also sit in just in case you have questions or comments for them as well. So that's up and coming. 
So the topics of the topics that will be discussed in this evening's soup chat, uh, for those of you who don't know me and who are joining us now, we're up to about 39 people. I am Dr. Tiffany Wright, the Williamsburg County Supervisor. Um, so our topics of discussion during this forum will focus on roads and ditches, uh, condemned and or unkept properties, litter issues, as well as the mask ordinance, and what we went over last night in the county council meeting, the county reconstruction plan. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, the upcoming uh, countywide soup chat meetings, we will take some time during the upcoming months and we will talk to those who I consider subject matter experts. Uh, and it'll be gauged towards some of the questions that citizens have that are not necessarily countywide issues, but they may be specific issues. So I'll be having, asking, asking representatives from uh, the tax recensor's office, the delinquent tax office, the treasurer's office, probate courts, sheriff's office, um, litter control, our codes enforcement teams, those people out, we ask for them next, you know, over the up and coming uh, countywide soup chats to come on board with me and sit in on a meeting to answer questions that our citizens may have. So um, I will get into, um, I have, again, like I said, my media marketing person is in here now. She's looking through questions uh, as you guys send them out. So hopefully I can catch some of them as well. And we can kind of get this, kind of get this meeting started. So our first topic of discussion is the roads and the ditches. Now, that is by far the number one question uh, uh, that I can say that, that our citizens are actually having a lot of concern on, mostly because it's really impacting not only our vehicles, but it's in some cases it's also impacting our houses, our, where we live at. And these issues are issues that I felt were a concern because it's been a while since we have addressed some of those issues. Now, bearing in mind that the people that came before me they did the best they could do in terms of getting these things. And this is like decades and years ago, up, up, you know, ahead of me. They at that time they did the best thing that they knew how to do to to save people and to to try to create a better life for our citizens here. So we're not knocking anybody for what they did. We just need to know right now how we're going to move forward with some of these things that we're dealing with now. Um, a lot of you have. You know, you do have shared shared outrage about the roads. That's that's big, and like I said, the ditches. Um, we have we root, routinely communicate with South Carolina DOT. Now, some of the mistakes that our citizens make is that they feel that every road belongs to the county. Well, we don't. All all roads don't belong to the county. Some of the roads belong to South Carolina DOT. Now, a lot of the roads do belong to the county, but the majority of them they. Uh, you know, in terms of the majority belongs to us and the rest belongs to SCDOT. I've asked people before you call in um, a complaint about a road that you check with the South Carolina Street Finders, um, Street Finder. And what you do at that point is you go to that website. Website. Once you're in that website, you toggle, the, go to do a drop down menu and look for our county, which is Williamsburg, and then type in your street name. And it'll let you know, is it maintained by the county or is it maintained by DOT? Now, what has also happened is people says, well, the county used to maintain a road. The county used to do this. Well, it doesn't mean that what the county used to do was actually what we were supposed to do legally. A lot of things, like I said in the past, was done because, you know, we just did what we could do to keep up, you know, to, to lessen human suffering. So a lot of stuff that may have been done then is not going to be um approved uh, now. So we're trying to correct some of those things now. Um, let me just run over just a few things with you so you understand. I can put you in perspective to what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis as far as county roads and county ditches. Um, Williamsburg County, we have approximately 13,440 road miles. That's a lot of road miles in this county. And if you need to, I don't have an issue with sending anybody a list of all the roads and how many miles those roads are. 13,440 roads that are county-maintained roads. Uh, we have approximately 
that adds up to about 675 actual county maintained roads give or take a few here and there we're still trying to make sure we can capture and discover these new roads that exist that may not been on our original list we have five motor graders Motor graders are the machines that go down and plow the roads or scrape the roads. We have five of those. So five motor graders attempting to do 13,000 roads in Williamsburg County and keep them up and keep them maintained is a serious and a daunting task for them to get done. They do the best that they can do with what they have. Um, we have approximately three of those road crews, the motor graders, they're constantly working the roads. Well, we have two of them that we pulled off to do emergency work that comes up. We divide this county up by districts, council districts. One district gets it one week and it moves all the way down to seven districts. What ends up happening is out of, um, out of uh, 52 weeks in a year, seven districts, you're looking at there's a possibility that that equipment may get to those districts at least seven times a year, seven times a year. Now, within these roads, some of these districts have anywhere between 150 to almost 200 roads that they, that they have within a district, depending upon the size of the district. So if I make it there seven times a year, chances are my first list is only gonna, I'm only gonna get through maybe a quarter of it. And then when it rotates around another seven weeks, then I'll get through the other quarter of it. And then as it rotates around, by the time I get back to the first set of roads that I've worked on, it's probably been a little over a year. So that's why you find that when people say, yeah, I did our road. Well, that's why, because it works in a rotation process. And that's just how it's been, because that's the amount of equipment that we, we have to be able to get the job done. And it's very, very difficult to keep up on the road. That's why you have the road issues. And then we have, like I said, those emergency road teams that go out that deal with issues that may have arise based on, um, that may have arise based on, uh, say we had rain or, or a hole developed somewhere or something happened. So the business of public works right now is that we're working, we're being reactive. Um, and not necessarily proactive because we're so behind on everything to include ditches uh, and, 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 and including roads. We are looking at over the next year or so, year or so, trying to figure out the best way or the best material that we can put down on these dirt roads so that we only really have to do a plow of them for a year. Uh, we have reached out to our partners in Marlboro County and we have some of our citizens that are looking into some other areas that we can figure out something that can be placed on the roadway so that it would lessen the amount of maintenance that has to be done on those roads. So that's up and coming. Again, that takes time and that takes money because you can't pull from your general days of work uh, force and, and keeping up with some of these things. So that's moving to the future. I really wanted to put you all in perspective of exactly how this all works. All road issues that we deal with, road work and ditch work, is the responsibility of a coordinated effort by the county supervisor, which means if a road does not get done or a ditch does not get cleaned out as it, start, as it is now, then that's my fault. That's my responsibility. It does not belong to anyone else. But I wanted to give you a perspective of what I'm working with when we're sitting down planning out how we're going to do uh, keep up with the roads. We need more people and really more equipment to get this done um, because we just don't have a, a large enough staff nor enough equipment to keep up with the road issues. Nevertheless, um, help with existing issues that were from long ago. But we're going to do, we're doing our best to try to get some of those things under control. The next area that people have discussed with me was condemned buildings. Once I go through all these, I'll give you an opportunity to, to, to ask me about the different areas. Condemned and uncut properties. It has been brought to my attention a number of times, and this is probably about maybe the third item on the list of what people call about is condemned buildings or, built or, or places that have, uh, have not been well kept. And there is a process that we follow based on a county ordinance for which now I'm having it updated because it's been 
been years since it's been updated. But basically, it just means it's what I call it the 30 10 day rule. And it's pretty much how it works. 30 days notification is made to the to the home to the property owner that hey, you have an unsafe condition and we need you to work on it. Well, they got 30 days within that 30 days to respond to the the, uh, the notices that are issued out by codes enforcement. Now, again, with codes enforcement, I have one full time person and one part time person trying to manage not only um, inspections and various other things, as well as dealing with um, ordinance issues or ordinance generated um, issues. So 30 days, owner is notified um, and say, you got to clean it up. After that, if they are not, if they have not complied, then 10 days after that, calendar days, no more than 30, a letter will be sent out to them telling them that, hey, you, you understand you're violating, you're doing this wrong, um, you need to make sure you get this cleaned up. If no contact is made after those 10 days, then we have to publish it in the newspaper for an additional 10 days. So once it goes into the newspaper and no contact is made, then at that point we take it to the courts and ask the courts to allow us the opportunity to place the home back in um, safe, uh, they call it conditions, back into safe and um, trying to make sure, uh, presented conditions of reasonable of, of safety as well as appearance. So from that point, once we have to do that, and the county will charge the uh, property owner for whatever it costs us to clean the property up. And once, if that is not, if they don't comply with that, then a $500 fee and a lien is placed on the property. So that is a process. Um, we've had sent out a lot of letters so far, um, but again, the letters come up great. But now we have to go back out to all these letters we sent out and check to see if the conditions had changed. And that's done by one and one part-time person. So that's the dilemma we face with those. We're getting around and trying to get a little bit more organized and trying to get this done. But again, it takes people and it takes more people to do this. But we're going to do the best we can with what we have. The second big item on our list is litter. You see litter all over Williamsburg County. You see all you see litter all over other counties as well. They all we all have litter issues because if we didn't, we all wouldn't be trying to apply for litter control money. So we all have it. It's just a statewide issue, and I don't care how many places we open up. We can have 50 recycling centers. People are if you don't want to throw your trash at one of the recycling centers or the landfill you're going to throw it on the side of the road. It is really nothing we can do about preventing people, everyone from throwing stuff out on the road. We can do some stuff to minimize it by some enforcement uh, things that are happening, some enforcement uh, types of things that can occur. But if, if people want to litter, they're going to do it. But it's our responsibility that when it does, when they do litter, that we try to get out there to get it cleaned up as, as quickly as we can. I mean, we have a lot of projects that are out there that I've already taken note to, and I've, I've seen the photos on Facebook, I've seen the emails, I've gotten the phone calls, and slowly but surely, we're trying to rectify those uh, issues with our public works department, our environmental services, and our sheriff's office. So we're trying to do the best we can. We establish a team called the LCAT team, and those are issues that we will, we are and will be discussing in upcoming meetings that we'll be having. Um, the other issue is, and I think what I'm going to do um, for the time being is I'm going to stop at them three issues. There's still some more issues that I, I need to get out there. There's one big one, and I discussed it in detail last night at the county council meeting. But what I didn't tell you is if the county restructuring plan does do what I am suggesting that it will or can do, the amount that it will save taxpayers' dollars. And the name of this game here is to how do we spend our taxpayers' dollars with a high level of fiscal responsibility. And that's my responsibility. Council trusted me to, to have this job to be able to make sure I did that. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So I'll get into the restructuring um, ideal and give you opportunity to at that point to ask questions. But as of now, do we have any questions in reference to roads, ditches, 
condemned upkept property and litter issues. Now, if you got ditches and road issues, I ask that you, if it's a specific road you want me to look at, I ask that you just inbox us because I know it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's a lot of road issues. It's a lot of things that you want to say about roads. But if it's something specific to a road, I ask that you please just inbox that and allow for any other issues or questions that people may may have during this. So what we got? We have <clears throat> Miss Susan Johnson um, was talking about Broomstraw Road. She wanted to know if it was county or state, but I looked it up on Street Finder. It is state road. Okay. And she does there are five huge holes on Broomstraw. Okay. Um, that's the only and then mm -hmm. someone said 15 years, Miss um, Riviera, 15 years and only one time did they come and come and Seaboard Road was done. Mm -hmm. Seaboard Road, is that? I'm not sure. I, the, I think that's a state road. I don't think that's a county road, but we're going to check that out. She's checking now for me on Street Finder to see about Seaboard Road. Seaboard Road. Yeah, Seaboard Road is also a state road. Right, it's also a state road. I don't remember, I believe, I don't remember specifically what road they said they were going to be working on um, by next year. I don't know if that was it or not, but I do know that, that the, some of these state roads and resurfacing and things like that, they're controlled by uh, a group, part of it is controlled by a group called, um, what is that group you're on? I got CP, CP, TTC. TTC. And sometimes they get money to, to enough money to get roads done, but as it has been already said that it takes about three hundred thousand dollars to pave one mile of road that's a lot of money just to pave one mile so there we're all dealing with costs here and, and how much it costs to do that but those issues that you express especially with seaboard i'm sure mr livingston who's the the director for stdot for our area i'm sure he's heard about those things um, even when we get complaints about um, state roads, I send him an email. He sends me an email if it's dealing with the county. So I, I don't really know what to say, what the timing is. But I'm sure if you call his office, he can let you know exactly when that road will be looked at or resurfaced or redone or whatever the case they're going to do with that state road. Sister so Carolina asked, is it possible mm -hmm. to use prisoners to help clean up? So those things, as far as, and that's going to be a, a better question, I'm only speaking from what I've heard. Um, as far as getting prison, which I know you all used to do that, but rules have changed according to how you can use them. And it's going to determine whether they're state prisoners or if it's if they're state inmates or they are local inmates versus federal inmates. Um, state, it's just so far, the, the nearest state facility is a distance for us. By the time we went there and got them and brought them back in here, it would only serve for a few hours before you need to get them back. And with using other um, entities to help with that, it, it's a cost associated with it because then we have to tie a deputy up to go out there and help with that mission if it's something that we can control within the county. But you can't no longer use the chain gang concept anymore when dealing with litter control issues. Um, so that's why we have a lot of organizations out there. But if you want the specific answer, reach out to environment and the environmental services director and he can kind of tell you exactly how that would work. What do you got? Someone's got um, a lot of people asking about the old um, Clay Hospital dem dem mm -hmm. demolition. Um, I believe the vital aging uh, group is waiting on uh, the environmental, the phase final two. phase two environmental study to come through. And once that's done and it has been cleared, then at that point, they will be able to execute um, the demolish, demolishing of that demolitioning of that facility. Yeah, Ms. Uh, we've got Ms. Okay. Robert Welch, and he said November 9th, they're supposed to get the back from the Department of Commerce for phase two. Okay, so number two should come back from Department of Commerce November 9th. 9th. Yeah. And then from that point, they'll go ahead and start putting their plan into place. What else we got? Can we get notified sooner before food drives is given out again? Hmm. Some of these entities will send out information um, regarding things that they're doing around the county, and we try to get that information out as quickly as possible. But 
that the county itself, uh, we provided assistance for one of the food uh, giveaways uh, months ago. And we did try to get that information out as quickly as possible. But we were, were kind of, we would be waiting for anyone else, private or so, um, nonprofit organizations that would be doing those drives. We have to wait on them to get the notification out. I'm looking to. <laughs> okay. Mm hmm Absolutely. Only time to drive to Kelly Hospital. Mm -hmm. Bugsy Road. Bugsy Road. Yeah, Gas tax fix roads. Well, yeah, gas tax do fix roads if we get our percentage of it. Uh, Williamsburg County do not get a get the largest percentage of the gas tax. Very, very little funding comes to Williamsburg County. So um, that's something that uh, I don't have an issue with me getting in. And I guess we can publish that information as to how much we actually receive. That way you're able to see, and it should be a comparison to what other counties get yeah. to. Yeah, so. And usually it's an average around 100000 a month for mm -hmm. the 15000 for a That's right. Mm -hmm. Use of deputies using the county sheriff's office for personal use as I started a, a video log. Can you look into the other fuel and mileage rates? Was done. I will, Ms. Coswell, I will share that information um, to the sheriff and I will, and he will respond to you. Um, he will respond to you regarding your concern. Uh, Councilwoman elect, you said you, you are you lo you looking for something for us? I think you are looking for us. Something about about Bugsy Road. Did y'all find it? Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you all right. Let's see. All right, I see it on there. I have a web address for that. Okay, let's see if I can share tomorrow. Okay. Any questions regarding any of the things I just said? I just stated. I must be doing good. Not that many questions. I'm doing good, I think. <laughs> Either that or not enough people are signed on. Um, for those who are just joining us, we're talking about some of the main issues that have been brought to my attention over the last uh, one year and 11 months of my uh, administration in county government. So uh, while you all are still thinking of something to say, I'm going to talk about what we spoke about last night, but give just a little bit of details. We are, a few years, years ago, the county decided that, um, well, we felt that it would be necessary for us, as when I first took office, to get a county-wide study done. The study was to, was, in, was to encompass the need of the services and the amount of employees. And what did Williamsburg County needed to do to get down to its optimum level of both things, um, services and employees, so that we can become more efficient? Well, as I stated last night, we sent out bids for someone to come in and do a few a study, uh, for a group to come in and do a study. Well, we got no one to do it. No one wanted to take that up. And uh, I don't know, you know, it may have been the way we wrote it, the RFP, I don't know. But at any event, I do know these studies could cost us any in upwards of about a little over a hundred or so thousand dollars or more. It depending upon depends upon how deep you want to go in your study and your ability to look at uh, to to evaluate the efficiency of, of how you're operating in county government. So with that being said, I just decided to take on this huge um, this huge project myself, um, having my PhD in in um, and, and business uh, operational management, it was it was okay for me to do it because I've done many studies before, research studies before. So this was a little bit different because it involved obviously different topics, but I think nonetheless the data will support what uh, I, I, I have proposed to council yesterday. So we looked at, first of all, we looked at county structure, county profiles. Okay, so how many employees does Williamsburg County actually have? 
So it has been reported some time ago that we had well over 400 and some odd employees and full time and then um, another 100 and some odd employees, roughly about 480 employees total, full and part time. Well, when we began to do the audit, I kind of figured out where were those, I wanted to know where were those people at? Uh, because it was always suggested that we had the most in our whole population group and in most cases, even larger counties. So I know working with these folks every day and looking at departments and assessing departments that that couldn't necessarily be the case. So I began to go through the audit, audit each department. And then once I pulled every all the names out of it, I sent it over to the department elected or appointed officials and asked them to check it. And sure enough, uh, we came up with about a little over 100 less employees um, under the general fund that we actually have. So once that was pulled out, it was like, okay, now let's look at it from a clean slate because now we really know what we have as far as employees. Um, now let's take that information and compare it with other counties in our population group. And in that group, it listed several counties um, and, and just to name a few, Clarendon County, which is our, our next door neighbor, uh, as Edgefield, Marlboro uh, counties, Dillon County, um, my gosh, I had a bunch of counties on here. But for the most part, I wanted to now look in, look at it from the perspective of employees versus services. Um, it would come, it would, it was determined that Williamsburg County had maybe the third, the third largest amount of employees um, in all that in that entire population group. Um, then I looked at not only employees, services, but what is our coverage area? How large is our county? And of course, Williamsburg County is the largest of all of those areas that were surveyed, were uh, researched in our population group. Um, so it kind of said, you know, in this case, I wanted to now not only just look at employees, you have too many employees, but I wanted to understand why we had X amount of employees. So what I did was I looked at a few things that seemed to have the greatest disparities in numbers, and that was our fire stations, our recycling centers, our parks, recs, buildings and grounds, our law enforcement entities and our emergency medical services. Those seem to be the ones that had a common, de common denominator in it that were all high in all of these or all, had the most employees in that in that those particular areas and, and or more um, less services that may have stood out from one county to the next county. So I looked at our fire stations and I just took a few and I'm not gonna go through this whole assessment. If you'd like to see this, I can issue you a copy of it. I don't mind emailing you a copy of it so that you can even see the comparison. Pretty much in three of our counties, Marion, Edgefield, well, two of our counties, Marion and Edgefield, they have no fire stations that our county maintains. They're either maintained by municipal agencies or volunteer agencies, so are usually maintained by volunteers. Um, places like Clarendon County, which is our neighbor, they have 17 fire stations and Dillon County has about six stations. And that, these are just one area I looked at. But when you look at Williamsburg County and you compare Williamsburg County with the rest of them, Williamsburg County has 23 fire stations. That's more than any of our group, um, our, anyone in our population group. The thing about Williamsburg County is we had 23 stations, but 12 full-time firemen. And we do have a host of volunteers, but in places like Clarendon County, who I stated before has 17 uh, fire stations, they have over 30 full-time fire personnel working for them. That's a huge difference. Um, where again, I stated we have 12. Uh, you have counties like Dillon, who ended up, and I, I think I got my wrong, the wrong slide, but places like Dillon has, um, I'm just gonna pull this one up, I actually have these down. Um, they, I don't got it on that one either. Um, other places that have less stations, but um, more stations or about less stations, but more people working for them. But then when we looked at, also looked at our recycling centers and Williamsburg County has 20 recycling centers throughout the county, whereas places like Clarendon, they have 12, which also includes their landfill. And you got other places like Edgefield. Again, our population, within our same population group has like eight recycling centers. 
and then the list just goes on. You have um, another county that actually does curbside services. When you look at all of this and you're doing a comparative study about the efficiency of how a county is being ran, you have to compare those with like items in another county. So you can't just say, well, we got this many people. Well, you, you need to have the understanding of why. And we have about 71 part-time employees because 40 of those, 45 of those work at our recycling center. So you see what I'm on, see where I'm kind of going with this is that we're more asset heavy. We have more stuff, for lack of better terms, than we do people. And that's been the, you know, the issues that we've been having is that we got a whole lot of stuff, but we just don't have enough people to manage those things. That, that's why we have issues with um, our roads because we just don't have enough people to maintain them or enough equipment to do them. Um, that's why you have fire departments, um, you have law fire department and law enforcement agencies that is very difficult for them to cover 934 square miles. Um, when you have Marlboro County who only has 480 miles and they got 30 deputies. And then you have Dillon County that has, or Clarendon County that has 607 square miles to cover and they got 62 deputies, but we only have 45. So that is a huge difference in how we have to look at our county and, and have a better understanding of why um, we have our, our responses, the way the, our response level that we have, as well as some of the other issues that affect county government um, as a whole. Uh, we have one county that has a $5.5 million that's just dedicated towards their fire department. Well, we already know that our fire department has never received an increase in about maybe 20 years, but we've continued to build on additional fire stations. And those fire stations are needed. Uh, I can't tell you that they aren't. They are needed because it affects homeowners insurance and people get a less, they have to pay less on their home insurance if they have a fire department that is close within, I believe it's five miles within their area, or at least a five, five mile response area, they pay less money. So they're getting a bonus from that, whereas it's continuing to become a burden on the taxpayer. Um, just like with our recycling centers, I mentioned last night, and um, Councilman McKnight had corrected me on one of them. He stated that one of them was the lease, the lease agreement was uh, redone, but that's not what we had upstairs. So he's still working on getting me a copy of that as well as our clerks looking that up. But out of 19, out of 20 recycling centers, we only have one lease that's actually updated. And the rest has expired many, many, many years ago. So these are things that we face in county government. And again, it's nobody's fault, but it's stuff that we have to get together. If we truly plan on being a lot more fiscally responsible for taxpayers dollars, We've got to clean up our clutter here, and that's what we're doing now, cleaning it up. Uh, we have a lot of issues. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we aren't, um, but I do know that we all can, working together as a team, as a community, we can get through these things. Uh, going back to the savings plan, if the county can stick to the restructuring or reconstruction plan, that's if we can do it. And I believe we really at this point don't have a choice because the longer we continue on this, this line or we continue on doing things this way, but expecting change, it's not gonna happen. So we have to do some drastic things to make this happen. So phase one um, includes how are we gonna cut back or re, um, reorganize our structure within county government. How does that happen? If we can start with phase one, phase one could save the county, could save the county. Now don't come back later on and say, Supervisor Wright, you said that we were gonna have, no, I said could. So let's be clear with that. What it could do for us, providing nothing else affects us, no more COVID-19, no more nothing, how it could create some savings for us is between six to $800,000 a year. Now that's the, the ratio. If we can get through this first phase of the reconstruction plan and nothing else happens, 
we could save the county between six to eight hundred thousand dollars. That's just this fiscal year. And this fiscal year is over with um, in June. Now, next fiscal year, we're looking at an average of about eight hundred thousand dollars that we can actually save. Now, that's pretty big um, for a county who in the past really have not really been able to save a whole lot of money. Um, but we could do this if we can just get the support we need and make sure that we do not overspend our current budgets and hopefully nothing happens more, um, I should say greater than our issue that we're dealing with with COVID-19. I believe that we will look really good going into the next year. And then next year, I think we can build on that to the point to where we can be in a, a better financial position. Now, none of this is gonna happen overnight. Phase one can, and over the next few days, I will be rolling out and putting phase one into, into play. Now, phase two is that us looking at the assets we have out there and seeing if we can get rid of some of the stuff that we own. How can we pass this on to some of our communities who would do a better job at it? because a better job at managing it without it being a county um, price tag stamped on it. We just have a lot of stuff and we just got to work to getting some of that down. Now phase two could save us in, in, in upwards of the cost of ha not having to insure these buildings, the electricity can be saved, the maintenance of us having to, to, to do the, the cutting of the grass. Those savings will add up so that we will be able to take those monies and use what we have, keep with some of the things we have, but enhance them and make them better. So that's phase two. Phase three, it pretty much goes into, okay, phase three can, is, is pretty much dealing with, um, hold on, let me make sure I got my numbers. Oh, that was phase two. I think I missed one. Hold on, y'all. Phase, that's phase three, is, 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 is combining and consolidating assets. But phase two is dealing with how do we combine departments and consolidate departments so that we can use more people to, to do more things um, that we need so that we can, instead of having to hire people, how can we bring a group of people together to work on something, or work on a task or work in a department and be as efficient as it would if we had to hire a person for this department, a person for that department. How can we bring our resources together? So that part deals, um, you know, in with consolidation plan of how we're going to do it and cross training people so that they can become more of an asset to the to county government. Now, as I stated before, when you start tap, uh, when you start adding additional responsibilities on people for what they for which they were not hired initially to do you have to have some kind of compensation for them to make it worth their while because when i say uh, combining or consolidating i mean people taking on extra duties um and i'm and i say that i'm the first one in this i'm the first one to to step out there and say and other departments are going are doing it now and and they're they're really it's working but as far as my department um looking at how do I work with less but still get the job done? So if that means um, I'm having to get out there and clean the floors, mop the floors, um, I'm out there having to help them cut the grass, whatever they need, that's what we will do because the nature of this is to be more fiscally responsible and to gain the trust of the citizens that if you trust me with your money, the money that you're giving me now, if I come back a few years and I ask you for increases or to have additional manpower for our law enforcement, our fire department, or having additional areas or, or providing some extra services, I would hope that you trust in, in me to say, okay, well, we can think about doing that because they have been responsible for the money that they've given, that we have already given them. So I'm hoping that's my, my, my goal is to regain trust and let the citizens know that we too want to make sure that we're doing what we can do to make sure we take care of your um, your tax paying dollars. So questions, any questions? What time is it? Oh, 6.53, okay, we're doing good. 
Ms. Scotty Scott says, so for 30 you are already mentioning that it's going to be a cost of $100,000. Are you going to charge, <coughs> excuse me, charge that, or are you going to continue and do it with your account, or are you going to write it to the utility? <laughs> um, this, is, this is my responsibility. Um, county supervisors, for me, being the county supervisor, it's my job to become more, to learn or, or, or create more better efficiency and better um, uh, proficiency and efficiency in, in the job place. So no, that, that's part of what the taxpayers play, pay me. I don't get anything extra for doing that. Um, trust me, if I charge Williamsburg County for the work that I do, they would, you all really would be ready to vote me out of office <laughs> um, because I'm a hands-on supervisor. I call myself a working supervisor because that's what we're supposed to be doing. So, any other questions? I just wanted to answer his question. He had a question about the um, demolition of the Old Kelly Hospital. Yes, I, I don't know if you if you heard me or not, Mr. Burroughs, but I believe November what do you say ninth, um, they will be getting back with us at phase, by phase two of the project from Commerce to see if they have to or see if they're going to be um, accepted for the uh, environmental study that they've already done. And once that happens, then we can start, uh, we can put the demolition in play. So um, by November, we'll have a better time frame as far as, and that's vital agent. They would be able to let me know where, how they want to proceed after that. Any other questions? Hmm. And let's see, I'm trying to scroll through to see if I see anything else. Mr. Cooper just asked about how can we ensure they are going to patch roads correctly with SDOT. Yeah, uh, we have very, 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 we probably maybe three or maybe four or five, I don't know. We don't have a whole lot of paved uh, roads. Uh, and what we have to do is if we, when we're trying to do, or trying to get the roads that were done maybe by CTC and we have to get them repaired, we have to either get some assistance from DOT to utilize their equipment because we don't have the equipment to even repair even our own paved roads. And there's very few of them. It, it, would, it wouldn't be cost effective for us to get equipment from. But I do see what you all see out there that they, they shovel it in the dirt and by the time you drive past it, it kicks back up all on your car and now it's back to being a hole. Yeah, we, we've seen that and those things have been reported to um, Mr. Livingston with DOT. Let's see what else. Ah, I should have one roads there for you. Let's see. Let's see. Is the mass ordinance still in effect? Yes. Mass ordinance is still in effect. And I think where people get confused at was they looked at the bottom line and it says 60 days from the date of it um, being implemented. However, um, county is no longer necessary to, um, this declaration shall remain in force until the conditions associated with COVID-19 have subsided and the emergency activity in Williamsburg County are no, no longer necessary to protect life and property of the citizens or, is a key word, upon the 61st day after the effective date of this emergency declaration which means that we are still in conditions because we are still under a state of emergency in South Carolina, um, still dealing with the threat of COVID-19. So this ordinance is still in effect, still in, still in effect. We are sending out letters, hopefully this week to our businesses, reminding them that we do have a county ordinance um, and we are asking that they enforce it but yes, it's in effect. What else we got? Yes, Ms. Snyder, we have gotten word that we have, for, and, and for some reason this may be a big deal and maybe something we need to report to King Street, is that we do know Halloween is approaching us and that is the perfect place to play a Halloween prank in. Um, so we are hoping that you know they will look to probably 
enforcing, um, enhancing enforcement over there now, uh, over there to make sure kids don't get in there. And trust me, they're moving as fast as they can. It takes so long to get an environmental study done and for them to get the results back. But they ran into a snag in the hospital, so that's kind of what pushed them back um, to this to this time frame now. So, but they are working on it, and it is something that we're all we are all aware of. What else we got? Um, we're just looking. I'm trying to look at my screen, huh? I know. I'm trying to get try to scroll down. Well, as always, uh, Winsburg County citizens. Oh, there has been. Uh, this is my last issue. Uh -oh. I have seen a lot of, uh, let me address this issue. There has been a lot of issues that have came about, a lot of conversations that have come about. And although I can't tell you what to do as, as a county supervisor, all I can do is ask you and to inform you about the, the word, the use of the word stealing money. It has been a number of times that I've seen this come up on, on Facebook with your name attached to it and accusing people of stealing money in government. You have to be very careful about the term stealing money because that word and that phrase could get you in trouble because you will sometimes, there may be a time where you will have to put your money where your mouth is. And I don't want that to happen. Be careful about accusing people of stealing money because that is that's a serious um, offense to some people and they will take that seriously and take that and run with it um, considering that people don't mind freely saying that but I just caution people about the term stealing money uh, in this administration if you ever want to come up here ever and I invite you all to want to see anything that we have done, any transactions that we've done, any anything that that is uh, um, within the FOIA request, um, here, which is most things dealing with finances is, 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 uh, can be looked at or can be requested based on FOIA. You are welcome to do that. We have nothing in this administration to hide from anybody. If you want to see it, give us time to pull it up and we will get it over to you before you say or make a comment of stealing Please make sure, make sure that you have all your facts before you say that someone in county government is stealing money. So I'm just just putting that out there because I'm seeing that a little bit too much. Um, but again, like I said, I'm transparent. This administration is transparent. Whatever you want to see from us, it's, you can see it. It's okay. In fact, I will be publishing all, uh, publishing on our face on our um internal internet, um, all, not internal, our website, <laughs> our website, all of the county salaries for those who make $50,000 or more. Um, considering this is a very hot topic for Williamsburg County, I will publish it there. You may look at it and determine who makes over $50,000, but by law, that's all I have to publish is who makes anything $50,000 or more. It is considered public record. So for those who, who like to continue to FOIA me, you will be able to get that information off of the county's website at your leisure. So that'll be next next week. We'll have the county dem, uh, county profile as well as those things on the county website. And maybe it'll help eliminate some of the FOIA requests that are coming in to county government. Um, the other thing, we had a, a citizen last meeting, council meeting, ask why are we wasting money putting up buildings? Well, a few years ago, the citizens voted on the capital project sales tax, um, which is affectionately known as the penny sales tax. With that penny sales tax, we are able to, to, to uh, get or to build new buildings for various organizations, such as our King Street Fire Department we, and, 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 and Police Department, as well as the Williamsburg County Fire Department and EMS buildings and other buildings that will be coming up um, in the future. Uh, this is, to me, is one of the best investments that we've made. The citizens voted on these particular items. 
and be used for the capital project sales tax, affectionately known as the penny sales tax. So that is how we're paying for the build uh, for those buildings that are going up and that will be going up. Um, that does not come out of taxpayers' dollars. So that's well, it does come out of taxpayers' dollars in the sense if you go, but it comes out of all of us when we purchase all of our money when we purchase um, different items from um, stores and, and, and ordering things online, etc. So that doesn't come out of the general fund, which is the operating budget of government. So that's how we're able to do that. It was already approved by the citizens. Is there anything else? Commissioner Hare asked, has money been appropriated for the North Oak Hill Hospital? Yes, I believe that's up. Mm -hmm. Grant money. Oh, yeah. I think it was what, 50 that The county had to sign for the, yeah. It, it's grant money that has been approved already. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anybody want to have any off air conversation with that? Feel free to give us a call. I'll hook you up with um, Ms. Baxley, and she can kind of tell you what's going on with that project. And or you can call um, Mr. Robert Welch, the Executive Director of Vital Aging. He would be your best source of information. Anything else? Oh, I have some announcements I got to make. Okay. So, trick or treat parade. Um, it's going to be it's Winsburg County's trick or treat parade. Um, instead of a parade driving past you, you drive past the parade. So this is something that is no contact in terms of people getting out of the vehicles there to drive in. Um, it's going to be held October 30th, 2020 at 6 p.m. at the County Recreation Grounds. Um, you'll see gift bags full of treats while staying in your car. So this is something that we're trying to do to kind of boost up, you know, boost up the life. And, and we're, I know we're, we're going through some stuff right now dealing with COVID, but this is just something that the county is putting on. We do something every year. We didn't feel that it was a reason why we shouldn't do it this year. And how candy is being um, paid for, because that was a question one of our citizens had, is either the employees are donating money, donating candy, or it's based on a grant, the extras from a grant that we had received some time ago. Um, it was payment for us doing a service um, to give away food. So we took that money and reinvested it into um, our citizens and our children. So that's how that's being paid for. Any other questions? Um, Ms. Green said, can anyone get about to be rid of closed, dilapidated warehouses and buildings in the Donald area outside of Greenberg? So um, we are working. We spent a lot of time to the tune of five weeks in the Donnelly community trying to get, um, get it cleaned up and get some, some much needed work done in there. Uh, we have sent the first of many notices to the warehouse that sits there, and I do understand it is an eyesore, and we are waiting for the time frame to expire for us to take the next action. And that's with some of the houses already. That that right there was one that we really needed to get on pretty quick because that that was a huge problem. So we're, we're working on that. It just takes us a little time. Um, to get those as far as what's required under the ordinance as far as timing. But we're, trust me, I'm, I'm fully aware of it and we're doing everything we can to get that squared away. What else we got? Oh, forgot about that. All right. One of the biggest days of our lives, which should be, you know, every four years, every day, all this particular day should be big for all of us anyway. Election day is November 3rd. If you had not gotten out already to do early voting, the last day for you to vote is November 3rd, 2020. We have absentee voting that is open now at the Alex Chapman building. And these are the hours and times. When I say Alex Chapman Auditorium, that's 147 West Main Street and King Street. Uh, and it's open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. And it's also open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. We also have a new location that opened up this year, which was J.J. Mincham Community Center, um, and that is at 2233 Hemingway Highway in Hemingway. Um, those hours of operation is Monday through Friday also from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday. Um, on Saturdays, it's open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please 
get out and cast your vote. Let your voices be heard and vote your conviction. Whatever you believe to believe in, get out and vote. Um, so there's a, a whole lot I could say about that, but I'm just going to be quiet right here. <laughs> so please get out and vote. Um, it's important, and, and, and our lives can depend on it. So get out there and vote. Any other questions? Um, about that. Thank you again for the work on Big Two and Miss Allen. Who does DC Cooper belong to, and what are the future plans for it? So right now, it's owned by the school district. We're talking about DP Cooper is owned by the school district, but they're allowing us to use it um, for shelter. Um, we they've done some training down there. Um, Sheriff's office has done some training down there. Um, we want the building to stay, as they said, stay alive. Because once you no longer use a building, it becomes it begins to to become dilapidated. So we're doing whatever we can right now to utilize the facility until something else comes up. Again, it's owned by the school district, but um, we kind of foot some of the bills inside of the facility so that at least we can keep it up and, and moving. Um, but I have no future thoughts or plans on it yet. I've heard a lot of community ideas, um, but again, it's going to cost money to do that, and I need to get to a, good, a better place with what we don't own now in the county and try to get some of those things cleaned up before we look at taking on um, another investment of this nature. So that's where I'm at with that. What else? I think. Thank you guys for all your great comments. Um, we're not perfect. Uh, I'm not perfect. Um, we're not perfect. But I do know that working together and really just, just keeping our, our minds focused on the positive side of Williamsburg County, um, I believe if we all stay focused on that and we don't invest any more energy on, on negativity, um, because that's so easy. Being negative about our county and having negative thoughts about the things that we're trying to do, that's easy to do. I, mean, I challenge you to do something hard, and that's become more positive about our county and what we have the ability to do. Um, I believe we have a great group of leaders that are in positions um, now and in the future. And I think that we will be able to do so many more things. Um, sometimes it just it, it, it helps when you have the right mix of people. Um, you can't have a group of people that's all one way because it, it may not necessarily work. But I think that we have assembled right now a group of different, uh, diverse people with different ideas. And I believe that, you know, although we have we have our challenges, I don't think that there's much of anything that we can't do. It's just it's just patience. Um, you can't expect me or um, anyone in this administration to get everything done in four years. It's just not going to happen that way um, because it didn't take us four years to get here. But I assure you that if you exercise some patience and understanding that we will do what we have to do for the betterment of our citizens here. And I'm not a politician, and trust me, I, I may say some stuff that's wrong, or I may say some stuff that may be harsh, but I'm going to tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Um, we just need to stop being so negative about everything and really focus, change that energy and focus it in on what's positive. Um, we get caught up in rumors. We get caught up in everything that is just negative. And it's okay if that's where you want to be at, but... I'm not going to be there with you, and I'm not going to have any of my of my vision for this county be stuck in a, in a, in a pool of negativity. Um, so either we get on this boat and we ride it together, or you just get left out there in the water. But we're going to move forward. We're going to do better in this county. We, we will rise above what people have said we were, and we're going to be people who we need to be, and that's good people working for a common goal. So if you have no other questions for me tonight, I thank you all for joining me. Um, there will be many more like this. Again, next time we will set the, some of these meetings will be set up according to districts because I kind of want a little smaller crowd 
um, to kind of talk to you about specifics. But I, anytime you want to come see anything we have, anytime you want to have a conversation with me, I, it's best that you inbox me. I do try to get back with you all, but having to answer hundreds of calls a day, hundreds of emails, I try to do my best to get back with you. Um, if I miss it, just call me back. If I miss it again, call me back again. But like I said, I'm, I'm that nosy supervisor. I like to be in everything. So if I miss something that's important, text me. You all have my personal phone number. Pretty much all of Winsburg County has my personal phone number. Um, and if you don't ask a friend, they could reach me, I'm sure. Um, but I'm here to support you. All of us as in county government is here. We all work together as a team and a family. So please um, enjoy your evening your evening. I want you to stay safe. I want you to put that dreaded mask on your face because just like you, I'm tired of wearing a mask, but I can't, I can't get complacent because as you all know, this thing is starting up again and we want to make sure that we're not part of that damage that's done when this, when this next wave comes through. So again, um, good night. If you've got questions, we will post them or we will review them. Um, I will be answering them up during the night. Um, and if you have anything, anything you need me to know or, you know, you need some clarity on, feel free to call me, ask me, and I'll, I'll be there to answer. Other than that, Winsburg County citizens, I appreciate you for spending a little time with me tonight. And I really, really hope you enjoy your evening and the rest of your week. Have a good night.